to the Sports Mix, Nick Verzellini alongside me, Kyle McLaughlin. We're now joined on the show by the head coach of the Muscleman Appleman boys basketball team, Derek Basile. Coach Basile, it's been a little bit. How you been? Uh, good, guys. Hey, absolutely. Coach, um, your team last season got off to a slow start. You had graduated a lot of seniors from uh, the previous season, um, but Toward the end of the year, you guys were playing pretty good basketball. You were able to get Troy Wilson healthy again, and he made a big impact heading into this year. Um, are, there, are you having higher expectations for the beginning of the year, considering you bring back Wilson and uh, I believe both Shelton's are back as well as well as, well as some others to well, kind of yeah, keep this core fair. together. I mean, um, you know, we do have uh, six seniors. Um, five of those guys played a lot of basketball for us last year. So, um, you know, after our slow start last year, we started two and seven. Um, you know, we got Troy back from an injury and, and, and Colton got inserted into the lineup and, um, we, we made a nice front end at the end of the year, beat a lot of quality teams. So, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, our expectations a little higher this year, um, you know, with those guys coming back. But like I told him, I tell him every day, you know, we, we got to work hard. We got to continue to get better. What was the off season like for your program? How were things going during the flex days? Well, we had a good off season. Um, our guys do a good job. You know, we went to a couple camps, um, so it's always a good experience to get away and, and play against good quality people. Um, guys played in the fall league, and, and they played during the spring. So um, our commitment level was pretty good uh, throughout the off season. Our, our weightlifting program was pretty good. We we thought we had good participation there. So and these guys they put in the work. So hopefully that'll show when we get out here. Coach, you mentioned obviously bringing a lot back from last year. Here's some newcomers that you're looking to see step up for you. Well, I think, you know, um, I don't know if they're necessarily new, but uh, Anna Santa Maria last year was a was a freshman, played some minutes. Um, we expect him to make a little bit of a jump this year and play a little more quality for us, quality minutes for us. Um, the rest of the guys, I think right now, um, or guys that played for us last year. We do have a new senior, uh, Trent Whitmer, uh, could see some action for us. But, uh, you know, the, the other six guys, they, they played a lot of minutes for us, and you know, they're probably going to shoulder the, the bulk of the playing time at the beginning of the year, especially. What are your goals that you have in place for your team this year? Well, I mean, I, we don't – I mean, I don't really – I'm not real big on setting these real, real long-term goals. We, we try to do things where, um, you know, we, we pay attention to the process. We, you know, we work every day and try to get better every day. I think if you if you stay kind of, um, you know, kind of to that pace where, you, where you're just looking day in and day out, trying to improve, uh, trying to prepare for the next opponent, I think if you can keep it, at least for me, I try to keep it in, in that perspective – and if we can do that, then I think at the end of the year, I will give ourselves a chance to be successful. Coach, I believe your team uh, opens the year taking on Sharando on uh, December 6th at home. Um, I guess just what can you say about your non-conference schedule this year and how do you hope that prepares you for the uh, challenge that the EPAC is every season? Well, our non-conference schedule is pretty brutal. Um, and I told the kids I didn't do you any favors this year. Uh, I think our schedule is tough every year. Uh, this year, may uh, you can argue that it might be our toughest schedule. Um, you know, Sharando is, is, is a good, solid club out of Virginia. Uh, we got them twice. Uh, we play Bridgeport. We play, uh, you know, they were a state tournament team. Um, Parsburg South was a two-time finalist. We played them. We played Backley. We played Greenbrier East. Um, an Elkins team that was in the Final Four last year in Triple A. That's our non-conference stop. So, um, we certainly schedule tough. We, we feel like, at least in our program, we feel like if, if we schedule tough, um, you know, it puts us in, in a good position when we get in tournament time, we'll be tested, especially on the road. And we feel like that's important. So that's why we try to schedule in that manner. And then switch over to the conference portion of the schedule. The conference seems like it might be even more competitive than it was last year in all high schools definitely their teams improving what do you have to say i guess about the other five well i think there i think it's gonna, like i think you said it's going to be a very competitive league i think um all the teams have gotten have gotten better um i think there was there was, there was good quality last year i thought there was uh you know, every night you went out there it was a tough game um i think i think night in night out in this conference uh if you don't play well if you don't bring uh, your a game uh, you definitely have a chance to lose the basketball game. And really, I say that with pretty much our entire schedule. I think 
I don't think there's anybody on our schedule we can't beat, but I also don't think there's anybody on our schedule that can't beat us. So, uh, you know, we have to prepare night in, night out. And, and the conference is, is very tough. It's a lot of parity, a lot of good players. Uh, so, you know, we're looking forward to that. We, we know it's going to be a big challenge. Coach, what do you anticipate being some uh, strengths to your team this year? Well, I think, you know, we're, we're a little, like I was telling, so I've, like I've told people, we're a little different than everybody else. We're more of a throwback, inside-out team. We, we put the ball inside. We have some, some, uh, we have some size. We have some, some skill in the inside. Um, we probably shoot the least threes of anybody maybe in the state uh, where everybody else has gone almost uh, strictly to the three-point shot. But um, I think our strengths are inside game. Um, but, you know, with that said, our guards have to be solid. They have to keep people honest. They have to, to drive the ball well to the basket and make some shots to, to spread space the defense a little bit. If we can do that, then, then we'll give ourselves a chance night in and night out. But I think overall that those guys, uh, you know, Wollaston and Mahood, they're three-year players, and, and we're going to kind of lean on them, especially in the beginning of the year. Coach, do you think the ability to lean on your size and not have to rely on jump shooting at this level uh... – gives you some sort of advantage well you know i'm a, I'm a percentage guy I, I, we always we always tell our guys was we want to shoot high percentage shots on our end and we want to make the the other the opposing team shoot low percentage shots and you know we like to think that we we shoot high percentage shots um so you know if we come down we get a quality possession and, and we don't turn the ball over and we can get the ball inside um then, then you know that, that's a quality look for us even if we don't make it so i think it gives us an advantage um maybe over anybody else in our area. But, um, you know, the other people have, have the guard play and shoot a lot of threes, so that's their advantage. So um, we don't try to be like other people. We, you know, we know our identity and we kind of stick to it. Yesterday when we were talking with the Martinsburg coaches, Dylan was here, he had a question that I'm going to kind of take from him. It was looking at last year, what's something that you wish you could harness and bring over to this year's team? Well, I think I think the way we played at the end, our confidence that we played, like you know, we started you know, two and seven. We had some injuries, we had some some growing pains. We'd replaced a lot of people from the year before. Um, I think just that carryover of now that we have some, we have actual experience. Um, these guys, these guys have played major minutes in different key situations. So I, I think I think that that experience factor is what I like to carry over, and that confidence that we played with at the end of the year. Coach, some of your uh, key players on your team transitioning from the football season into the basketball season, how does that help having those multi-sport athletes? And, and what are some of the, I guess, challenges of having those guys have to transition from bas- or from football into basketball? Well, I think that, you know, when you, when you got guys like like those guys, those guys do a real good job in the weight room. Um, so they're, you know, they they kind of excel in that area. They, you can tell them. Um, you know, Troy has slimmed down, gotten stronger. Uh, Lo- um, Colton and Logan Shelton, you can tell they've, they've gotten stronger in the weight room. Um, so, you know, and, and being in those competitive situations on the football field, you know, that's important. That's, you know, you can't, uh, you can't simulate those things. So being in those high-pressure situations, and, and all three of those guys will keep players on our football team, I guess the drawback of that is, uh, you know, there, there's there's four or five months where they they either don't touch a ball or, or just you know maybe shoot a little bit, but they they really can't do much. So uh, that's probably the that's you know that's obviously the biggest drawback. But you know, with anything, there's going to be positives and negatives. All right, Coach Basile, before we let you go, to get to a little bit of a more fun question, non basketball related, just to get to know coaches a little bit more around the area. Huh? When it's the off season, when it's non-basketball mode for you what are some things that you like to do to just relax and keep your mind off basketball i guess <laughs> or is it always basketball 24 yeah, 7 nah, yeah no nah, it's not always basketball nah, we um you know i just i like to spend time with my family i've got you know, my wife and my two my two daughters um you know when i'm not there uh when i'm not you know with basketball which is this does take up a lot of time but um you know, I just I just like to hang out with them. You know, I, I'm okay just sitting around watching TV and hanging out. And um, yeah, my daughter plays on the JV girls team, and you know, so we'll we'll go out and shoot some basketball. My other my other daughter's really into. Uh, she's at West Virginia in the creative arts department, so um, you know, whatever things she's she's into, I, I enjoy being part of that. And, you know, we like the vacation and be at the beach, and uh, I'm pr- pretty normal outside of this. All right, Coach, thank you for the time, and good luck this season. We'll have you on again uh, 
at some point, I'm sure. Great, guys. Hey, thanks a lot. Appreciate you having me on.